Hey there, Dr. Alan Christensen here with you, and I want to talk about your pituitary gland. Is it healthy? Is it diseased? Super important, and I'm talking about this because I think many people have thought that there have been problems with the pituitary when thankfully there was not. And there have been also cases in which it was underdiagnosed or missed, and that's also bad. So let's go deep in this. For starters, what is the pituitary? Well, if you could reach in your nose <laughs> and go up just another inch, you're on your pituitary. So it's more or less in the middle of the brain, and it's the, it's the manager in the corporation of your endocrine system. Let me go deeper on that. So the hypothalamus would be the CEO. And let's say this is the gal who owns eBay. I'm gapping on her name. Um, but let's say this is her, and she's running the whole show. And she has various managers that manage various workers. And she knows the overall direction of the company, but she won't always know exactly if a worker is goofing off or working hard. She won't know that herself as the CEO. But the manager does, and so she'll talk to the manager. And if the earnings are down, she'll tell the manager, hey, get the workers to work harder. And the manager will walk out on the floor and they'll see you know, who's goofing around on social media and who's being productive, and they'll, they'll manage the workers. So in this analogy, hypothalamus is the CEO, pituitary is the manager, and these various workers are your glands. So that's your thyroid gland, the adrenals, the ovaries, the testicles, the pineal gland. Those are all the various workers. Now, the pituitary is critical because if it's not doing its job, the workers, they're going to goof off. <laughs> so in this model, just imagine with me that all these workers are lazy, that they only work when the manager tells them to work. And so too, the manager only tells them to work when the CEO tells the manager to work. <laughs> so the CEO is really heading this whole thing up. And the CEO tells the manager, push them harder, and the manager then pushes them. So we call that a positive feedback. They only work when they're told to work. So the good thing is that if you want them to slow down, all you've got to do is just back off. Just quit fussing at them and they'll slow down. Let's say maybe they're pushing too hard and they're burning themselves out. All you've got to do is just stop telling them to work a little bit and they'll slow down. So that's how the whole endocrine system works. It works by positive feedback. You tell your glands to work when you want them to work. You don't tell them to work as much and they'll work less. And it's all good. It's all groovy. <laughs> but the difficulty is that if these upstream messages are wrong, then the output is catastrophic. So relative to your thyroid, the hypothalamus makes thyrotropin releasing hormone. Thyrotropin is another name for TSH. You'll see that called both things. And so thyrotropin releasing hormone, or TRH, causes the pituitary to release TSH, which causes your thyroid to release hormone. So the ideal balance is that when the hormone levels are too high, then we see your gland is overworking. And so the whole upstream control down-regulates its stimulation on the gland. The hypothalamus says, hey, I control, chill. And the pituitary says, okay, I'm not going to tell him to work as much. I'll lower the TSH. And the gland slows down. Or in a disease state, like say Graves' disease, there's too much hormone coming out. And the pituitary says, hey, quit that. And the pituitary shuts down TSH to nothing. But because the gland is out of control, there's still this T3 and T4 that's elevated. On the other hand, we've got hypothyroidism, almost always from Hashimoto's. So here we've got the free hormones that they can shut down, say, completely. Or say someone had their thyroid removed, there's no free hormones anywhere. In that case, the pituitary is going to yell and yell and yell. And it's going to say, hey, work, work, work. There's nothing really coming out. And so we see the TSH and the free hormones at the extremes on a seesaw at the extremes, very important. So people often assume that between these extremes, that it's just like this, but it's not at all. <laughs> it can be very different, and I'll go more into that in depth. So the pituitary does get diseased. By far the most con common problem that occurs to adults is a pituitary adenoma. And that's just random cells that grow on the pituitary that are kind of like the cells that it already has. And that adenoma can cause exaggerated amounts of hormone to come out. 
or if the adenoma is in other t other the pituitary is so small it's got it's got two stalks and literally the microscopic differences determine which part which hormones you're regulating from the pituitary so you could also have an adenoma that's squeezing part of it and blocking those hormones to come out in almost all cases an adenoma is going to be way too much or way too little of everything it's very rare almost unheard of to have a pituitary disease be selective to one gland over another. What I mean by that is to have the pituitary give a wrong signal to your thyroid, but give a correct signal to the ovaries, the testicles, the adrenals, everything else. Now the pituitary can also make prolactin. That's a hormone that typically is there in tiny quantities with the exception of lactation or nursing. So a rather common finding with a adenoma is to have a prolactinoma, to where it's also making prolactin. So a woman or a man could be producing breast milk. And for a woman, it could be a time to where she didn't just have a baby, just a random output. That points towards a prolactinoma. Prolactin can also have effects upon other hormones and block fertility and block menstrual cycles. So adenomas, most common pituitary disease, and they're usually, usually having exaggerated outputs or more rarely having low outputs. But when they happen, they happen across the board. You don't have an adenoma goof up your thyroid pituitary relationship and give a healthy relationship everywhere else. So I went into that in a lot of detail because many cases someone will have, here's the most common problem, they'll have a low level of TSH, but yet their free hormones are not high. Maybe they're normal, maybe they're even low. And I've seen so many times to where a doctor will look at that and understandably think, hey, that's not right. Why would the TSH be low and the free hormones not be elevated? Clearly, this is not a simple thyroid excess, they would think. They would, they would say that there must be a pituitary problem. The pituitary is getting the wrong signal. Not necessarily. So in almost all cases, let's assume in this scenario that the other pituitary hormones are normal, that the pituitary hormones are being put out as they should, that ACTH is not suppressed, and that FSH, LH are not completely suppressed, that, there's, that the prolactin is not down to zero. So in those cases, it's not that the pituitary is broken. You can also look at IGF and HGH as ways to gauge pituitary output. But assuming all those hormones are not also compromised, then the pituitary is not broken. This is a strategy. And when you develop hyperthyroidism, because your gland is overproducing or because you're just taking more than you need, the first step to occur is the TSH lowers. That happens long before the free hormones ever elevate because the free hormones are not your body's control mechanism. They're what's left after you've adjusted all the control mechanisms. So when you're getting too much thyroid, the first thing you do is you get rid of more thyroid. <laughs> you eliminate it faster. You block the effects of it. You numb yourself to it. You literally get rid of it more quickly. And in many cases, too much thyroid, as evidenced by a low TSH, can be shown up as low levels of free hormone. And I can think of a lot of times to where people have seen this, and, they, and, and also that can be happening with hypothyroid symptoms. So someone could be legitimately fatigued, depressed, gaining weight, losing hair, and they're seeing this low TSH and these low hormones, and they'll think, I need more thyroid. And guess what? They might even feel better for a few weeks if they took more thyroid. But then the body drops it off again, or the TSH goes down lower, and the symptoms come back. So what's really happening is the body wants less thyroid, and you've got hypothyroid symptoms because your body is fighting all that extra thyroid. So the solution is really to back off a little bit. Believe it or not, when the TSH creeps up, the free hormones can regulate. Now, they regulate. Not healthy people don't always have high levels of free T3 and free T4. They just don't. Intuitively, I can see why that would make sense because healthier people do have lower TSH levels within the normal range. Optimal TSH is lower. But studies of healthy people don't show that they consistently have higher levels of free hormones. They've got a big distribution of free hormones, but they've got lower TSH scores. So that's what we want to emulate. This is also true for adrenal disease. Many people that have low cortisol, they think their body cannot make cortisol. And I'll encourage just testing ACTH. 
And if someone does have Addison's disease, then that pituitary signal to the adrenals will be high because the body wants more cortisol, but the adrenals aren't making it. But in the absence of a disease, if it's more adrenal stress, the ACTH is normal or it's low. And some have misinterpreted that to say, oh, I've got low cortisol, but a low ACTH, my pituitary must be broken. Probably not. That's a very normal response to a chronic state of stress. That's your body trying to let you rest and recover. Now the difference, however, is that if that ACTH is low and the cortisol is low, but also you've got low TSH and low thyroid hormones, and you've got suppressed levels of IGF-1 and growth hormone, and you've got unusually low levels of FSH and LH, those are suspicious signs there being an adenoma or a, a space occupying lesion squeezing off your pituitary. In those cases, medical imaging is appropriate, just taking a picture and seeing if there's a problem. So that's rather rare and unusual. These are a few hundred, a few thousand cases per year. Then there's the hypothalamus, and there's only been handfuls of cases of hypothalamic disease. And hypothalamic disease is so, so severe, you're not wand wandering around thinking about it. You're hospitalized. Your body cannot regulate much of anything. So in almost all these cases, the pituitary is not broken, thankfully. Some cases, it does get the adenomas. We see that by high prolactin. Also, if it's a large enough growth, we call that a macro adenoma, the pituitary sits just below where the optic nerves cross. So it can squeeze on the optic nerves, and your field of vision can change. It can also trigger headaches or migraines. So it can happen, it is rare, but low TSH and low hormones is not a pituitary problem in almost all cases. So deep dive into no topic. Hope that was helpful for you. Take great care. We'll talk in really soon. Bye-bye.